Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to the lectures in chemistry and the atomic structure and chemical bonding. My name is Mangala Sundar. I am in the Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras. And my email addresses are given here. The coordinates are here for you to communicate to me. The lecture continues from what I left in the previous one, the properties of spin angular momentum. We saw in the previous lecture, the spin a half angular momentum, and we looked at the Pauli spin matrices. The relation that we have with the Pauli spin matrices, the commutation relation and the anti commutation relations, all those things were explained a bit. And in this lecture, we continue with the same, but now with uh, integer angular momenta and higher angular momenta, namely. Uh, not spin a half systems, but spin one, spin three halves, a little bit of that before we proceed to the understanding of the interactions between two spin a half systems. Uh, in this course, of course, the importance is uh, to the interaction between two electrons or two angular momenta uh, of two spin uh, one half systems. Let me first restate or uh, recall what we wrote down in the last couple of minutes of the last lecture. We did sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma x Pauli spin matrices, spin one half matrices that is equal to 0 and likewise for sigma y sigma z plus sigma z sigma y and sigma z sigma x plus sigma x sigma z is equal to 0. And then we had sigma square as sigma x square plus sigma y square plus sigma z square. And that is 3 times the identity matrix 2 by 2. But recall that when we wrote down the spin angular momentum operator I x, we had it as 1 by 2. 0, 1, 1, 0, and therefore this was written as 1 by 2 sigma. Okay. Therefore, if you are looking at i square, then essentially it is 1 by 4 sigma square, therefore it is 3 by 4 into the identity matrix 2 by 2, namely 1, 0, 0, 1. This is the spin a half angular momentum. This is the Pauli representation of the angular momentum spin a half in terms of matrices. The relation between the two is given by this numerical factor one half. I think that is important to remember. Hmm? Now, also recall the properties that when we wrote down I plus on uh, beta we had it as alpha and I minus on alpha is equal to beta. Okay. These things can be generalized. The angular momentum properties of I plus and I minus on any spin angular momentum uh, states can be generalized to the following relations. Recall that when we wrote down alpha as a state, it was the uh, quantum numbers half and half corresponding to the i squared on alpha or beta giving you half into half plus 1, which is what was written as 3 by uh, 4 uh, times alpha times beta and i z on alpha and beta. This is just to recall so that we continue from here. You remember this was a one half on alpha and this is was a minus one half on beta. Okay. Now, the general relations for all these things is I for 
1, 3 by 2, 2, 5 by 2, 3 and so on. These are all important in the coupling between the angular momenta as well as nuclear spins when we study at some point of time later the nuclear magnetic resonance spins as well. But the properties of the angular momentum are all the same and they are generalized by the following relations. Namely, I z on the spin state I m, the two values, the quantum numbers are given as I m. This is given as I into I plus 1 I m and I z on m again sorry I m is given as m times I m and the, the number of states I m for any given I is 2 I plus 1. 2i plus 1. Therefore, if you think about a spin 1, the i here corresponds to this quantum number, the m here corresponds to this quantum number because this is i square, I am sorry, this is not iz, this is i square. The i square and iz being the operators which commute among themselves, only two quantum numbers describe the spin state of a single spin and these two quantum numbers basically are used to represent the state i m. Therefore, for a spin 1, we have i is equal to 1 and m is equal to 1, 0 and minus 1. So, we have 3 states 1, 1, 1, 0 and 1 minus 1 with the corresponding values for the iz operator that iz on 1, 1 gives you 1 times that, one iz on 1, 0 is 0, iz on 1 minus 1 gives you minus 1 and i square gives you 2. Now, what about the i plus on i m? Okay. This can be obtained in general and I am going to give you the relation namely it is i minus m into i plus m plus 1 square root i m plus 1 okay. and likewise i minus on i m is square root of i plus m and i minus m plus 1, i m minus 1. One way to remember this combination whether it is a plus or minus in the first term is to recall the fact that i plus on i i the highest state is 0 and i minus on the lowest state i minus i is a 0. This is the m value, these are the m values. Okay. So, m takes the value minus i minus i plus 1 i minus 1 i this is what you had. For a spin a half it was very easy this was a minus a half and this was a plus a half there were only two states because minus i plus 1 stopped with i. Therefore, for a spin a half system the i plus on i i was essentially i plus on half half that was 0 and you can see that right away that i minus m ensures that m never exceeds i, m never exceeds i. Therefore, if you were to arrange the states in some ladder form, then in the ladder the lowest is i minus i and the highest is i i and the i plus operator takes it up and the i minus operator takes it down, but there is nothing below the lowest and there is nothing above the highest. So, it is easy to remember that the moment you remember i minus m you can immediately recall that it is i plus m plus 1. So, some way of mnemonic uh, form to recall and remember important relations. Okay. Therefore, if you were to write on i x the action of i x on i m it is 1 by 2 of i plus plus i minus on i m. Okay. Thus, the answer would be 1 by 2 square root of i minus m times i plus m plus 1 with the state i m plus 1 and i minus giving you plus square root of i plus m i minus m plus 1 on the state i m minus 1. Okay. 
that is the matrix uh, that is the action of the operator on the state i m. Therefore, the state i m is not an eigenfunction of the operator i x the same way like the poly spin uh, matrix that is the i x was not uh, giving you the eigenvalue for the alpha state or the beta state. It gives you i m plus 1 or i m minus 1. So, let me just highlight that alone. So, the state i m when it is acted on by i x gives you i m plus 1 or i m minus 1. Therefore, recalling that the states i m and i m prime or orthogonal delta m m prime, it is immediately uh, possible for us to write that if I write i m prime i x on i m, I will get the result namely delta m m prime square root of i minus m i plus m plus 1 and here the m prime is what? The m here is m plus 1. m plus 1 m prime because m prime has to be equal to this in order for i x on i m which gives you i m plus 1 to be non zero. Therefore, m prime so this i m prime will recover this i m plus 1 on the action of i x on i m provided this m prime is equal to m plus 1 that is what this is the part. Now, what about this term? This term tells you that if m prime let me use a different label if m prime were equal to m minus 1 then m minus 1 will be recovered. So, the second term that you will get is delta m minus 1 m prime square root of i plus m i minus m plus 1. So, the matrix elements of this quantity i x if I have to write the general operator i m prime i x i m the matrix elements of this operator i x uh, or non zero provided m prime is equal to m plus or minus 1 those are the only two possibilities if m prime is equal to m plus 1 this is the matrix element if m prime is equal to m minus 1 this is the matrix element therefore if you write this in the matrix uh, notation generally i for example let us write this for spin 1 If you write this for spin 1, the i m will be 1 1, 1 0, 1 minus 1 and the raw states are 1 0, 1 minus 1. Now, this element is 1 1 i x 1 1. This is 0 because the two states are identical. This element is 1 1 i x 1 0. This is not 0 because m prime is equal to m minus 1 because there is a plus component of this which will raise 0 to 1 and therefore, this element is non 0. But on the other hand this will be 0 because here m prime this minus 1 is not m plus minus 1 but it is, is actually 2 off. So, this is 0 this is non 0 and likewise you have 1 0 i x 1 1 this is non 0 1 0 i x 1 0 this is 0 1 0 i x 1 minus 1 this is non 0 and likewise 1 minus 1 i x 1 1 this is 0 
this is 0, this is non zero, 1 minus 1 by x, non zero, and then the diagonal element 1 minus 1 by x, 1 minus 1, this is 0. So, for a spin 1, if you calculate these things using that formula, you must get the operator representation, the matrix representation for the operator will turn out to be 1 by root 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. This 1 by root 2 is basically 1 by 2 and the matrix elements that you calculate will all be root 2, 0, root 2, 0, root 2. So, I have cancelled the root 2 to give you this. Okay, This is what you will get. This is what you will get from this uh, calculation. Okay, So, this is for I x. What about I y? I y is minus I by 2, I plus minus I minus. Therefore, you can see that I m plus 1, let me write, because we know it is going to be only one or the other, I y, I m will be minus I by 2, I m plus 1, I plus on I m. The minus will bring it down to m minus 1, therefore they are orthogonal to each other. And I m minus 1 on I y, I m will be, there is a minus sign here, so it will be plus I by 2, I m minus 1, I minus on I m. I minus on I m lowers it to one, one value down and therefore, the normalization property of the states uh, I m I m is 1. That takes care of and therefore, you can write the same thing as I m minus 1, I m minus 1. That is also 1, any value of m which is the same on both the Kett and Bra states. So, given this, if we can write the I minus, the I y operator as 1 by or minus i by root 2. Okay. Now, let us see this. This is the first element is 0 because it is diagonal. You can write all these things are 0 and the 2 of diagonal they are also 0. Therefore, what you have is this element is, this element is 1, 1, i plus 1, 0. So, that corresponds to this type of matrix element. 1, 1, m is 0, then you have that and therefore, the corresponding value will be, uh, there is a minus i by root 2 is already taken. Therefore, this is 1, this will be 1, this will be minus 1, this will be minus 1. Okay. So, this is the representation for you can calculate it based on this formula. Okay. There will be some tutorial examples for you to do that, but try to follow this formula, namely the the first, very first one, this formula, keep this in mind. Okay. These are the properties of spin 1 operators. However, for spin 1, or any higher spin angular momentum, we cannot write I x I y plus I y I x is not 0. Okay. And for any spin including half, the relation is I x I y minus I y I x is always I I z, always. No matter whether the I corresponds to spin a half or spin 1 or spin three halves and so on. If the system is a spin three half system, chlorine nucleus, chlorine 35 nucleus has a nuclear magnetic moment that corresponds to a spin three half system. For spin three halves, we will have four basis functions. I m will be three by two, three by two, I minus one will be one by two. Then you will have three by two minus one by two and 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2. So, there are 4 states. And so, the 
spin 3 half representation the matrix representation for i x i y and i z for a spin 3 half system is a 4 by 4 matrix okay. and likewise for any spin i it is a 2 i plus 1 by 2 i plus 1 matrix. So, these are properties of the spin half systems uh, spin uh, arbitrary spin i systems. Okay. Now, we will get into an extremely important problem in both spectroscopy and in quantum chemistry namely the interaction between two spin a half systems. The interaction between two spin a half systems in quantum chemistry is of course extremely important because of we deal with electrons many electron systems and in nuclei we deal with the nuclear magnetic resonance electron paramagnetic resonance NMR spectroscopy EPR spectroscopy and anywhere where the orbital angular momentum of uh, uh, sorry anywhere two spin half systems interact orbital angular momentum is an integer angular momentum we are only talking about two spin half systems. So, these are all areas where the interactions have to be studied okay. and since the whole concept requires what is called the spin state representation for a two spin system it is like what we was, was introduced earlier in one of the mathematics lecture notes as the direct product of the two single component systems and let me do that in the next lecture. We will stop here in concluding that it is possible for us to write matrix representation for all the operators i x, i y, i z and a host of others namely i x square, i y square, i z square, i x, i y, i y, i x, i z, i y, i z all these operators for any i. Okay. So, we will stop here as the component for single spin systems and in the next lecture let me start uh, looking at the interaction between the two spin a half systems from the uh, background of what is meant by a two spin a half states, what is meant by the operator representation for two spin a half states and so on. So, until then thank you very much. <laughs>